A lot has changed since I made the video you're about to listen to. Uh, I made the video, I went to Montana and spoke at a Vietnam veterans uh, meeting and uh, that was in September 2018 about the same time I was submitting the IG request for Panama. I am now the director for Panama Canal Zone Veterans for the Military Veterans Advocacy on the board and I ask that everyone join the Military Veterans Advocacy. It's $25 a year. We have these four sections. Uh, we also just brought on Okinawa and we are growing uh, helping all all veterans that were exposed uh, to uh, chemicals during their service. Uh, so please go to Military Veterans Advocacy and join today. Thank you very much and enjoy the show. Hello everyone. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to bring forth this important message. And thank you very much uh, Tom Gerritsen for inviting me to speak today to your uh, town hall meeting. Uh, my name is Donna Torno and I am president of the Panama Canal Zone Veterans Association Association and president of the Thailand Vets Association and I have a mission uh, to help these veterans prove out that uh, AKA Agent Orange and Agent Purple were indeed in Thailand and Panama. Um, I first started with Panama because uh, my husband and I were stationed in Panama in 1974 to 1977. And uh, we saw spraying going on all around us on board base, um, at the perimeter of base, along the fence line, in the ditch banks, uh, if you were lucky enough to get behind a truck that was going five miles an hour spraying the ditch banks. Um, you might not be able to pass even though um, it, the, there was room to pass, but the plume of the cloud of whatever they were spraying was so thick that you didn't want to be engulfed in it, especially when we were driving a Jeep with uh, no top. Um, we were in the tropics after all. But uh, we did see the spraying, and so did everyone else, and many, many thousands of people are ill uh, with diabetes, um, cancers, uh, heart disease, uh, many of the presumptive diseases that the Vietnam veterans have already proven out as uh, connected to exposure to uh, AKA Agent Orange. The reason I put that in quotes is you'll read a lot of reports um, and you'll see that in quotes all the time because there really was no such thing as Agent Orange and Agent Purple. I have read the Dietrich reports when it first started and they were testing these items and they only paint, painted colors around the barrels so that the technicians at Fort Dietrich would know what they were using on the different plots and what, what worked best so that they could use it tactically in Vietnam. There was absolutely no difference between commercial version and the tactical version and there was absolutely not a tactical version. It was just commercial use, commercial item used tactically in war. I have read the um, defoliation conferences. Um, I read the first uh, conference with the general and the USDA because before 1970 um, it was the USDA that was in charge of pesticides and they were actually down in Panama testing all kinds of things um, I found in my research. So I started researching um, if Agent Orange was in Panama and the reason I did is in 2015 I saw a little blurb that uh, Agent Orange was in Panama and I said, wow, that would really explain a lot because my husband had been sick for 24 years and in and out of the hospital, never really knowing why. Um, he, in about 11 years after we left Panama, he con contracted diabetes 2 at age 42. It doesn't run in his family, he was not overweight, and we didn't understand why. And he also contracted uh, pain, just incredible pain, and we didn't know why either. So he was in and out of the hospital for about 24 years. And uh, we had to retire early. We lost our home and we just waited for Gene's death because he was so ill. 
Um, we were very, very fortunate because where we retired to, there was an excellent radiologist that read Jean's records and said, um, you need to go see uh, UC San Francisco chief surgeon and for the endocrinology department. And so we went up there and thinking, well, you know, this hope maybe they'll have a cure. They put his pictures up and on the light board there and said, uh, this is remarkable. And to me, you know, remarkable is a good word. So I was kind of curious as to why we were there. And uh, remarkable was not a good word. And his pancreas was all white because he had grown 14 stones inside his pancreas. You see, Agent Orange affects the endocrine system. And in his case, it affected it in a bad way. So the doctor, the surgeon told us there's only been a handful of people in the whole world that ever needed this surgery. So they had to take his pancreas out, fillet it like a fish, take those stones out. They couldn't save it, and they couldn't save the gallbladder either because the stones had now mucked up the gallbladder connection as well. So he lives every day without a pancreas and a boatload of pills that he has to take just to stay alive. It has ruined uh, his ability to do a lot of things that he used to love to do. I know some of you might be able to relate to that. These veterans are dying in their 60s and um, they want help from the Veterans Administration. The Veterans Administration says, no, nope, Panama is not a place that Agent Orange was used. So I wanted to know, once I found those shipping records, if that was actually Agent Orange. So I contacted Hatfield Consultants in Canada. I emailed them and because they were the ones that went to Vietnam and found that it was in Vietnam. So I wanted to know what the difference was. And they were nice enough to send my email and the shipping records to Dr. Dwornchuk. Dr. Wayne Dwornchuk was one of the guys, he and Hatfield. He is a senior environmentalist and an Agent Orange expert, and they went to Vietnam and proved it for Vietnam veterans that it existed in Vietnam. And he wrote a beautiful opinion that anybody anybody on base where they're using 245T for vegetation control is exposed to dioxin. You see, they couldn't make 245T without dioxin. Not possible. And before 1963, they had no idea how much dioxin was in 245T. So I found the shipping records for 74 to 77, and that was the time that we were living in Panama. I wanted to see how far back I could find these shipping records and was it just after Vietnam War that they sent them to Panama because they were left over from the Vietnam War or did they send them before the Vietnam War and I found that yes they did they sent them from the 40s in 43 I found a um, I wrote a book called the travels of orange and other toxins and that's available on Amazon with the proof that I had found. And I wrote that because my husband was denied several times. And I thought that if he dies and I die, I am also ill before this is proven out and these people get help. I want people to know at least the facts that I have found. So that is why I wrote my book. Since then, um, I needed some help with my husband's appeal because I understand that you can only win at the appellate level in front of a judge with facts that prove it out. We are waiting at the appellate level almost a year now and have not been docketed. There are tens of thousands, I think 92,000 the last time I looked, cases at the BVA waiting to be heard. It seems that the, bro the VA is broken in every manner, at least every manner that I have dealt with. And it seems to me that this is a cover-up because they say that only if the DOD says that Agent Orange was used on base, then, then the veteran might have a chance. They go by a report that was written in 2005. What they don't tell you is this report was written by Dr. Alvin Young. Dr. Alvin Young also wrote the reports, the rebuttals, that the veterans' allegations of Agent Orange being in Panama is untrue. I can prove what he says is untrue. 
He was also paid $600,000 by the Veterans Administration in 2012 to bring forth all the Agent Orange records he could find. He never brought forth the shipping records that I found. And yet he should know because he was he was on many committees of Agent Orange and he would have known. I found a report that he wrote in 1978 where he sources the pesticide review and says that on the pesticide review it lists all the rainbows on the table in the pesticide review for that year, those years, the Vietnam years. The pesticide review sources the FT410. This is a circular reference. This proves that Dr. Alvin Young knew in 1978 that there was no difference between the commercial and the stuff they used in Vietnam, the tactical, as he says. And in fact, in this report, he also says that um, that uh, that was just a code word, Agent Orange and Agent Purple. And he talks about the Dietrich studies. I've also read the Dietrich studies and know that that's exactly what they did. There's no such thing as Agent Orange, Agent Purple. The 245T, the dioxin in 245T, is very deadly. Before 1963, it was 30 to 40 parts per million. I know that we got that Agent Purple, 30 to 40 parts per million in Panama in 1959 and before. In 1948, the dredging director in Panama went to Washington, D.C. This is a reference in my book. And he asked Washington, D.C., you know, we have a problem with the hydrilla interfering with the water that we use for the canal. What can we use to kill this hydrilla off? And they told him, use this new stuff that we have out. This was 1948. Use 2,4-D. So they began using 2,4-D in Gatun Lake in 1948 and still use it today, I'm sure. Now, 1948 till at least 1977, I knew they, I know they used it, and probably after, but I didn't look after December 77 when we left Panama. And we know now that 2,4-D is also, also causes cancer. This was our drinking water. This was our bathing water. This was our fishing water. This was our recreation water. And yet, they say there's no problem, and we could not have been contaminated. So I kept looking to, for differences, and I found there are no differences between commercial and tactical herbicide. In 1970, Dr. Young shows up as chairman of the subcommittee on Agent Orange for President Nixon. I found some interesting documents at the Nixon Library. I had to physically go there because they're not available online and take pictures. At the Nixon Library, I found a document, a memo of an emergency defoliation meeting between Dr. Kissinger, General Haig, President Nixon, the Surgeon General, where the Surgeon General came forward and told them that they did another study on 245T, and they used 245T with zero dioxin in it, or as close to zero as possible. And guess what? It was still deadly. This was a secret memo that's now been declassified that nobody would ever find unless you go to the Nixon Library. I took all these documents together and I put them together in this IG investigation request. I sent a copy to the President of the United States, to the VA Secretary, the Under Secretary of the BVA, the Chairman of the Veterans Affairs Committee, and the Ranking Member of the, Chair of the Veterans Affairs Committee and also to uh, the IG, the office of the IG. I called the office of the IG hotline and told them who I was and told them of my allegations. They told me something of this magnitude would not go to them because they do not have the resources to investigate something of this magnitude to send it to the top. I don't know if they meant the president or the VA secretary or the chairman of the committee or some other top, but that's where I sent it. And I hope the committee takes this Seriously, this is a very serious matter. Thousands and thousands of veterans are dying. We have proven that it's there. We've even won a couple cases for veterans at the BVA level. 
Unfortunately, at the BVA level, there is about 92,000 cases sitting. Some of them are repeats because at the RO level, it seems that they're told, unless it's on the list of places where Agent Orange was used to deny. I think this is a tragedy. This is a real tragedy. And I'm writing another book with a retired Air Force captain that just proved his case for Thailand after about nine years of fighting. We are writing a book because this is a tragedy against the veterans. The Veterans Administration is there to serve the veterans and they have not done so. I hope that you take this matter seriously and you investigate this evidence that I have put forward. And if you need help in understanding any of this evidence, I am here to help you understand this. I had looked online and seen that the Veterans Affairs Committee was studying whether Agent Orange was ever in Panama. I hope that this material will help you in answering these questions and helping these veterans. Thank you very much for listening. I'll stick around for some questions. And if you'd like to um, take a look at my website, I really appreciate anything you can do to help forward this information to help these veterans. Here it is, October 2020. A lot has changed since 2018. Uh, as you know, I am the director for Panama Canal Zone Veterans on the Military Veterans Advocacy, and we are teaching uh, attorneys about the evidence for Panama. We do have a list of attorneys. If you need help and you're in appeal, I would suggest that you check out the Military Veterans Advocacy for a referral. I would also hope that you would support what we're trying to do, uh, trying to make Panama presumptive. We do have evidence that I think supports that. I will be rolling out that evidence. Uh, a lot of people have copies of this now, um, but I will put it up on my YouTube channel so that you will know uh, what we have and hopefully you will support us so that we, we do get to the Hill and ask for support of our uh, representatives and senators. We will have enough members uh, to uh, have them support us in this effort. Thanks a lot for listening.